Will you be going, Mr. Reader? I beg your pardon, Miss Bangwell? The Wembley exhibition. Ah. I'm dying to go, and my mother says I can't. Unless I go with a chaperone. Hmm? Huh. Uh, these are ready for your signature, Mr. Reader. Ah, thank you very much, Miss Bangwell. Mm. Um. Will you be going? Hmm? Oh, uh, the Wembley exhibition, right? Mm. Uh, very much I may have to. Well, don't you want to? To a man with a mentality such as my own, Miss Bangborn, the glitter and pageantry of such an occasion are overshadowed by the opportunities which thousands of wealthy visitors will provide to the criminal world. I doubt if there is a single international thief who will not pay at least one visit to London this coming summer. Oh, Mr. Reader, can't you think about anything but crime? No less. That is the sort of mind I have. I see evil in everything. Most unfortunate. <sighs> Reader! Reader! It won't happen again, Pine. While I'm director of public prosecutions, I tell you, it will not happen again. If you can tell Scott and Yard how to stop it, Sir Jason, we'll all be very grateful to you, I'm sure. I believe I heard you call, Sir Jason. What? Uh, Mo Liskey. Mo Liskey? You know Mo Liskey. Oh, indeed, yes. In other times, and under more favourable conditions, he might well have been a leader of Florentine faction. He might have been Machiavelli himself, for all I care. At the moment, he's operating in Inspector Pine's territory, who rules the Sullivans and the Burklows. He runs rackets and innumerable other activities, which seem to me to escape police supervision with remarkable ease. Dear me. His continued liberty is a disgrace! If I may say so, sir, Mo Liskey's liberty casts a reflection on other departments than Scotland Yard. I gave you foolproof evidence twice. Twice I gave you no foolproof evidence. No evidence is foolproof against witnesses who commit perjury and jurors who are bribed. You don't know what the Home Secretary said to me when Liskey was acquitted for the second time. A socialist Home Secretary of that. Well, I won't put up with it. I want Liskey and I want him convicted. We'll have to get him with blood on his hands. I don't care how you get him. Do you hear me, Ria? You want Mr. Mo Liskey, sir? I want him convicted, Rita. If there's another acquittal, I shall not accept the responsibility, except for making certain staff changes in my department. Do I make myself clear? Oh, indeed, yes, it is. Now, if you will excuse me, I will consider the problem. Get him, Rita, and if necessary, with blood on his hands. Blood? Dear me, what an interesting thought. Blood? Huh. Blood, hmm. If you'll excuse my saying so, Sir Jason. Well? Well, Molisk is a very dangerous man. Oh, you don't say so. Well, well, well. I mean physically dangerous, sir. I mean, Mr. Reader may be very clever, clever. but I don't... If you had such a man at the yard, Liskey would be behind bars. Reader is a mamba. Though don't tell him I said so. A snake, sir? Yes, a mamba. And two seconds after it bites you... You're dead. <laughs> Mr. Reader, it doesn't convey that impression, if I may say so. A rabbit, yes, but snake. A snake? Oh. Uh, please go on reading, Miss Bangwell. A hole was found in the roof of the temple immediately over the spot at which the guard stood, and the Moroccan authorities believe that a rope was lowered through this hole, down which the snake, probably a poisonous mamba, was dropped and... Oh, snakes. Oh, I can't read any more, Mr. Reader. Really, I can't. Yes, it is perhaps written in a somewhat melodramatic tone. Oh. Um, will you pick a card, Miss Bangwall? What? I have here 12 cards chosen from my file. Each one of them contains the name of a man who might be interested in buying the nine great emeralds of Suleiman the Magnificent. Pick a card. What does it say? <sighs> Oh, this can't be the man, Mr. Reader. It says, no convictions. Moliski? Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Pangborn. 
I've always placed great faith in the intuition of the fair sex. All right, all right, El Robert. What's the proposition? It is of such infinite importance and of such great danger to me, Mr. Goodman. Mo Lisky, that's my name. It is so perilous, but at the same time so profitable, that I would esteem the honor of speaking to you alone. OK. Harry, Teddy, beat it. OK, oh, Robert. Shoot. <laughs> Impossible. I have no gun, unlike you. I mean, talk. What's the proposition? Ah. Uh, have you read your English papers today, Mr. Goodman? Yes, yes. King George has opened the Empire exhibition. Mm, yes. Now, uh, in the photograph in my morning newspaper, the king <laughs> is not wearing his crown. Well, of course not. No. Now, I have, I, uh, I mean no disrespect to your noble sovereign, but I have a crown as valuable as his. At least I have the jewels from it. The jewels? The nine great emeralds of Suleiman the Magnificent. Uh, would you care to... <laughs> You mean you can get these? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean I have them. Where? Ah. Ingenious, Mr. Goodman. Lisky. Mm. Try to remember, eh? The name's Lisky. Oh, a thousand pardons, sir. I call all white gentlemen Mr. Goodman. <laughs> Provided they pay on the nail. I pay on the nail. That is why I call you Mr. Goodman. <laughs> you look great, Mary Lou. Xavier sent it me from Paris. It's a smoking suit. Xavier? Is he still over there? No, he has gone on to Germany, as if you didn't know. Well, why have you come to see me? Well, you, uh, you know how I feel about you, Mary Lou. And you know how I feel about you, Mr. Liskey. Du interessierst mich überhaupt nicht. Überhaupt nicht. Ah, come on, you like me. You like me a bit, don't you? Just a bit? Come on, admit it. I'm married. Yeah, to a crummy little forger. You wasted on him, Mary Lou. Come with me instead, eh? I'll show you the big time. I'm content with my husband. I think you know where the door is. I'll feed us in. Look, don't come it so I'm mighty with me, Mary Lou Plessy. You'll soon change your tune when that little forger of yours lands up behind bars. Behind bars? What do you mean? If you are thinking no, of... No, no, I'm not going to grass on him. Mo Lisky doesn't grass. All I mean is, well, Xavier's an amateur. You won't say that when you see what he brings back from Germany. Even the Bank of England will not tell the difference. I deal in real money, Mary Lou. Real money. The kind of money could buy you something that would knock your pretty eyes out. What is it? Oh. Interested, eh? No, I take nothing from you. No? Not even something fit for a queen? These? You can get these? That's how I feel about you, Mary Lou. You're the queen. You need a man who can treat you like one. You can really get these? I can. And for you? I will. See ya. Bartholomew Xavier, please. Read here. 
Ah, Inspector. What did your German colleagues reply? Ah, that sounds promising. No, no. Please emphasize to them that the Plessy must be arrested here. Hmm, here. Yeah. Bartholomew Xavier Plessy, you are charged with counterfeiting the currency of the realm. And you have been found guilty by the jury. You thought you'd found a new way to make old money and that your forgeries were undetectable. And so they might have been. And so might your evil attempts to debase the world's most stable currency, sterling, thereby striking at the very roots of our industrial and commercial life. Had it not been for the excellent, indeed, I might say, inspired efforts of our law enforcement authorities. You will be kept in penal servitude for seven years. Seven years? Seven years! I didn't sentence him. No, but what did you do? Nobody knew he was in Germany but you. Nobody knew when he was coming back but you. Shut up. How did he come to be found? Who puts the police on to win? Harry, Teddy, get out. Yes, boss. Well, the boss wouldn't do a thing like that, Mary Lou. What, Mo wouldn't grass on anybody? Well, of course not. Mo would never do a thing like that. Wouldn't he? I said get out! Yes, boss. Come on, Teddy. If it wasn't you, who was it? Answer me! Look, I told you. Xavier's an amateur. Anyway, he had it coming to him. You think I'll come to you because you put my husband in jail? <laughs> oh! <sighs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I love you, you know that. And that is why you betray Xavier to the police. I didn't betray him. You heard the evidence. You know very well who fixed Xavier. That little ferret from the public prosecutor's department, J.G. Reader. You really didn't tip him off? Reader doesn't need tipping off. You sound as if you admire him. He's a friend of yours, perhaps. <laughs> Reader, a friend I'd eat him for breakfast. Then do so. If you're telling the truth, if it was Reader who fixed my husband, you fix Reader. I can't marry Lou. And you say you love me. Look, you can have the emeralds. I want Reader. Of course, if you're scared of him. Scared? Listen, Mary Lou, I've got some big deals cooking, some very big deals. There's going to be more money in London while this exhibition's on, so I don't want to mix it with Reader just now or any other busy. Do him yourself. Yeah. You're a clever woman. You fix Reader. Oh, Mr. Reader, this parcel just came for you. From whom, may I ask? I don't know. Came in the post, sir. Oh, I don't think it's a clock, Mr. Reader. Smells more like chocolates to me. Hmm. Yeah. Ah, there is a feminine touch about it. Pity. Yes, Miss Bangborn, your intuition is always correct. Chocked as it is. French. Handmade in Paris. No... no card as to who sent it. Typewritten address. Imperial 1922 portable, I should say. Oh. Oh, they look gorgeous. Do you like chocolates, Miss Bangborn? Oh, thank you, Mr. Reader. Oh. I'm sorry, Mr. Reader. I thought you were offering me one. I should be delighted. But as my secretary, your health is a special concern to me, as indeed is my own. My health, sir? I was rather hoping that Mrs. Plessy would have persuaded Mr. Liskett to rise to the bait, but he is a cautious man, and I... Do not anticipate that we will find his rather masculine fingerprints upon such exotic confectionery. However, if Mrs. Plessy's very feminine fingerprints are, the situation will be interesting. Most interesting. 
Uh, Miss Pangborn. Mm -hmm. Would you be so good as to telephone the public analyst? I should like him to have a look at these. Are still open, Mary Lou. I don't want the emeralds, but if you do, well, look, El Robert has given me first option, but I've got to give him an answer one way or the other. Now, do you want them or don't you? And are you to go with them? No, no, no strings attached. I'll give you an answer when Reader is dead. Reader dead? What are you talking about? When Reader is dead, I will have the emeralds. And you? You I shall think about afterwards. Look, I've told you, Mary Lou, I'm not going to tangle with Rita. For you, there's no need. I have taken care of him. Huh? Maybe that's the telegram boy now. Open the door. Excuse me, sir. Watch it, copper. Where's your warrant? Oh. Maria Luisa Plessy, I have here a warrant for your arrest. Well, you better make it stick. What's a charge? You have been charged with attempted murder. In that you did convey by post to Mr. J.G. Reader a poisonous substance to wit aconite with intent to kill him. The jury has found you guilty, and I now sentence you to two years' imprisonment. Two years. Take two it years. Easy. No, remember where you are. Reader. That is my name. Mine is Mo Liskey. Indeed. I'm very happy to make your acquaintance, Mr. Liskey. You won't be. You've just sent down a friend of mine. Mrs. Plessy? A friend of yours? Oh, well, well, I... I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you for this, Reader. I'm going to break you up into little pieces. All right, Liskey, take a walk with us. Take your hands off me. City Come police, on. come on. And what's the charge? Intimidation of a crown witness and using threatening language. Come on. Dear me, it seems I shall have to be a witness again. Morris David Liskey, you are guilty of attempting to intimidate a Crown witness and of using threatening language. I sentence you to... Thirty days. Thirty days? What's the good of that? Couldn't get him more, sir. Not for a first offence. First offence? First proved offence, sir. Thanks to Mr. Reader. Did you think I'd be satisfied with 30 days, Rita? It is something to be going on with, Sir Jason. It also has the virtue of proving Mr. Moleskine vulnerable. You don't think the London gangs are going to hold a mere 30 days against him, do you? It is a crack in the ice, Sir Jason. 30 days. There may be a crack in the ice, but you're skating on it, too. I'm aware of that, Inspector. And I do not want anything to happen until Mr. Liskey comes out of jail. He will then take keen enjoyment in arranging my bashing. I think I had better have police protection until he comes out. After he comes out, you mean? Until he comes out. During his absence, I fear that some of his more loyal associates may attempt to exact premature vengeance upon me. And that would suit neither Mr. Liskey nor myself. Take care, Rita. No, couldn't get near them. He had two plainclothes coppers with them all the time. Door-to-door -door service. What did I tell you? Well, you didn't do much better, did you? No. But I've been thinking. You want to watch that? You might sprain something. Oh, very funny. Now, listen, Harry boy. When he got on the train with him, did he meet a girl? A good-looking bit. Classy, like. Yes. Yes, he did. In fact, he gave her a seat. How did you know? Hey, you want to go easy with that? How did you know? That stuff left. How did you know? Well, Mo tipped me off about her. Margaret Bellman, her name is. Mo reckons I'll read her fancies, her. At his age. 
That's disgusting. Well, they all go a bit funny turn 70, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> now, he meets her again at lunch times. They feed the ducks together in the park. Now, I reckon old reader gives them coppers a slip then. I mean, he wouldn't want them and coppers hanging around while he's chatting her up, would he? So, that's when we do him. Good. Give the ducks a square meal for once. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Reader. I'm a... Oh, Miss Bellman. I, I'm so sorry, Miss Bellman. I'm too dead. Oh, I've been looking forward to that. Right now, lads. First things first, reader. Reader, Lisk is out. Came out this morning at eight. I am very relieved to hear this suggestion. Uh, you may go now, gentlemen, and convey my thanks to Inspector Pine. <sighs> it's better. Now I know how Mr. Lisk gives you to be liberty again. Well, I only hope you know what you're doing, that's all. I do not anticipate any physical violence now, sir. I think that Mr. Lisky will have spent his 30 days thinking out rather more, something more subtle. He will have been considering my weak spots. Weak spots? <laughs> you? <laughs> have you got any? <laughs> I don't know. I shall have to think about it. I've had time to think about it. Reader worked out my weak spot. Now I've worked out his. The one thing he really loves. A girl he meets in the park every day. No. Well, she might come in useful, yeah, she's a blind spot. But I know what he really loves. Who? Not who, what? 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 His job. That's what he's gonna lose. Lunch now, Mr. Reader. Well, right, uh, good heavens, is that the correct time? Mm. Uh, yes, yes, Miss Bangborn. Thank you, Mr. Reader. Oh, uh, um, Miss Bangborn. Yes, Mr. Reader. What would you say were my weak spots? Your what, sir? As an impartial observer, what would you say my weak spots were, Miss Bangborn? Well, I don't like to say, Mr. Reader. Uh, please do, it's uh, quite important. Well, uh, your hat. My hat? It's so... Uh, well, people just don't wear hats like that anymore. Don't they? And your shoes. My shoes? They're square-toed. Are they? Mm. So they are. You did ask, Mr. Reader. Oh, it's quite all right, but I... I don't think that Mr. Lisky can make much out of my hat or my shoes. Uh, I was referring to weak spots in my character. Weak spots in your character, Mr. Rita? Yes, Miss Bangborn, I'll speak freely. Well, you haven't got any, have you? Come, Miss Bangborn, I asked you to be frank. But I am, Mr. Reed. I just can't think of anything. But you only live for your work, don't you? My work? How very interesting. I wonder.
Uh, uh, I'm so sorry. So sorry. I... Is there uh, anything I can do for you, madam? Uh, shall I get a doctor? No, no, it's quite all right, really. I get these attacks sometimes. They pass off quite quickly once I... Could I ask you one small favor? Yes, madam. If you could find a taxi and help me do it. Oh, I should be quite all right once I get home. If you could just find the taxi. Oh, yes, of course, dear. I live in Great Claridge Street, number 105. Thank you. Are you sure? Oh. Oh. Do sit down, please. Shall I send for the doctor, Madame Le Maire? No, Robert. It is all right. I am nearly recovered, thanks to this young lady. If I can just sit down for a few minutes. Yes, madam. Ah. There. Ah, oh, that's better. I cannot thank you enough, Miss... What is your name? Bellman. Margaret Bellman. Oh, you have been kindness itself. Can Robert get you anything? No, thank you. Oh, I must repay you in some way. A champagne cocktail, perhaps? Oh, good gracious, no thank you. I have an afternoon's typing to go to. That will be all, Robert. Yes, Madame Le Maire. Um, my lunch hour's almost over, Madame Le Maire. I really ought to be going. Oh, but you have been so kind. I am almost a stranger in this country. My husband died not long after we arrived here. He was the banker, you understand. Francois Le Maire. You have heard of him? I don't think so. Well, now that you're recovered, I really must be going. <laughs> he left me rich, but he left me lonely. And you have been so kind, Miss Bellman. Oh, not at all. I tell you what. I would like to hold a small dinner party, just a few friends I know. And you. We shall dine tete a tete. Perhaps a little dancing afterwards. Oh, it's really quite unnecessary. No, to... no, no. I insist it would give me such pleasure. You must come. Shall we say Thursday? Well, I... If I... this were Paris, I could arrange a handsome young escort for you. But, dear, I know so few people. Perhaps you would like to ask someone to accompany you. So long as he's a friend of yours, he will be welcome in my home. Now, please, do say yes. All right, Madame Le Maire, I will come. And I will bring someone. At least, I'll ask him. I do hope it's not a disappointing evening for you. I can't imagine it will be, Miss Bellman. Madame Le Maire, wife of the great French banker. I'd, I'd no idea you had such important friends. Ah, you see. I can surprise even you. You surprised me by asking me in the first place. But um, we mustn't keep such distinguished friends waiting. I don't believe I've seen you in that hat before. No, it's, uh, new. And the shoes? Are they new, too? Yes, I believe they are. All right, Sherry. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Teddy. Bye. He's fallen for it. Hook, line and sinker. I knew he wouldn't suspect anything if that girl asked him. Old fool. Serves him right. Should know better at his age. What's the plan, boss? Well, they fired a man in the home office last week because it was found in the 95 Club after hours. Mr J.G. Reader of the Public Prosecutor's Department is now on his way to drink unlicensed liquor on unlicensed premises. Good evening, Miss Bellman. Madame Le Maire is expecting you. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Miss Margaret Bellman and Frank. Oh, thank you, Robert. I'm so glad you could come, my dear young lady. And this is my friend, Mr. J.G. Reader. Enchanté, Monsieur Reader. Moi aussi, if I may say so. We are almost ready to sit down. Would you care to powder your nose first, Miss Belmont? If you please. I will show you the way. Robert, take Monsieur Reader's hat and coat. Hello? Mr. Liskey? Yeah? 
Mrs. Feldman here. They've arrived, Mo. Shall we start? Yeah. Now, listen. Give them a good time, eh? A real good time. Right. Be seeing you. Right, Fred. Come on. <laughs> All right, everybody. Let's start. Oh, Hello? Police? Listen. The Muffin Club? The place you closed down? Well, it's open again. Look, if you want to make some very interesting arrests, why don't you get along there right away, eh? Ah, never mind who I am. <laughs> A friend. I never thought I'd hear you on the phone to the coppers, Mo. Uh, Mr. J.G. Reader, I'll drop even my principles. so good as to climb out and follow me. Uh, don't worry, it is quite safe. I'm standing on the fire escape. Follow you? I will explain when we are out now. Please do as I tell you. I'm afraid this is Poor consolation for the champagne supper you expected. Please tell me what it is all about, Mr. Reader. I don't understand. Well, on reflection, I considered it was unsuitable for a young lady of your refinement to be dancing until the small hours in an establishment like uh, the Muffin Club. Muffin Club? It is not a nice place. The police closed it down quite recently. Quite rightly, in my opinion. Although I have no doubt that Mr. Liskey will pay Mrs. Feldman's fine again. Mrs. Feldman? I do not like her. And she really should not attempt to pass herself off as a banker's widow. She has not the requisite qualities. Oh. And you could tell that just by meeting her? No, no. Apart from her rather uncertain French accent, I knew from the start. I witnessed Mrs. Fellman's rather dramatic performance in the park the other day. From behind a nearby tree. I had suspected that something like this would occur. But I, I still don't understand. The police seldom raid anywhere without the intention of arresting someone. Uh, to a man in my position, it would have been a little embarrassing, to say the least. Oh, Mr. Reader. And it's all my fault. I'm so sorry. Not at all. I, I think that this little charade will be most useful in my future dealings with Mr. Liskey. Reader, what do you want? I can't stay long. I wouldn't have come at all if it were not so late at night, and the police are uh, otherwise employed. All right, all right. You've been clever this time, Reader. But how long do you think you can keep it up? I wondered if you care to meet me at Wembley Exhibition tomorrow. Wembley Exhibition? I believe the Prince of Wales is due to visit there. We can anticipate a big crowd. One is never so alone as in a crowd, you know. And I, I think we might be able to talk in privacy at Wembley. Talk? What about? The future, Mr. Liskey. 
our mutual future. Well, reader, explain tomorrow, but I shall certainly require an explanation. Oh, make a note, will you? Ring Inspector Pine and arrange for the arrests of the following persons, against whom it would appear he has been holding evidence. All right, reader, give me the names. First, Teddy Alfield. Second... Oh. What? Oh, not so fast, reader. Second, Harry Burton. Third, Louis Palavaccini. Four. Welcome to my humble home, Mr. Liskian. Um, please be seated. I am fairly sure that we have not been followed here, but I think it might be wise to draw the curtains all the same. Look, what do we have to leave Wembley for me? Why all the hurry? I do apologise for cutting your pleasure short. Pleasure? I must say I enjoyed it myself too. Do you know, Mr. Liskian, you will scarcely credit us, but the Palace of Engineering alone is six and a half times the size of Trafalgar Square. You don't say. It is a pity we could not find time to visit the Australian pavilion. I understand it contains a statue in butter, uh, in Australian butter, of our great cricketer, Mr Jack Hobbs, executing his famous off-drive. Look, read uh... No, sir, sorry, Mr Sir. I think that you will find it pleasant. It is from our dominion of South Africa. Look, reader, we went to Wembley to talk about our mutual future, remember? So far, you haven't said a dicky bird. What I have to say to you is very secret, Mr Lisky. Very secret indeed. Mr Lisky, how would you like to see the release of Mrs Mary Lou Plessy? Get Mary Lou out. Can you fix that? Oh, fix is a rather unpleasant word. Shall we say that in my world, as in yours, certain delicate readjustments become necessary from time to time? Oh, I see. You get Mary Lou out and I call my dogs off, eh? Oh, no, reader, it's not enough. I should say that the release of Mrs Plessy is only part of the arrangement I had in mind. Oh? What's the other part? Well, my instructions are, as no doubt you realise, to obtain a conviction against you for rather longer than 30 days. Oh, you won't do it, reader. <laughs> You're a fool if you think you can. Yes. That is very much the conclusion that I have come to myself. Keep talking. I am 52 years old, Mr Lisky. My retirement is compulsory in eight years' time and my pension will be very meagre, to say the least. I, I have not long to provide for my old age. It occurred to me that uh, it might profit both of us if we had, uh, shall we say, a mutual respect. I think perhaps that you and I are too dangerous to one another to remain enemies. You'll, um, you'll stay on at the Public Prosecutor's Department? Oh, certainly. I think I could be of little use to you if I did not retain my position there, but it is a thankless task, Mr Lisky. I never receive any credit for what I do. You think I'll make a better boss than Sir Jason Tuvey, eh? All right. It will be extremely nice to be appreciated for once and at the same time to have more adequate remuneration. And that is, to be quite frank, why I have sought to impress you these last few weeks. Yeah? Yes. Ah, you expect me to swallow it just like that? I think I can give you adequate proof of my good intentions. Proof? All right, let's hear it. Uh, oh. What? What is it? I fear that my housekeeper's returned somewhat earlier than I expected. I wonder if we will be so good as to leave by the back window. We must not be seen together. It will be fatal. The proof, reader, the proof! Tomorrow, tomorrow night, we'll meet now, shall we say, uh, uh, Swan's Walk down by the embankment at ten o'clock. I don't think we will be seen there. But quickly, okay. please. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Hello? Oh, uh, could I speak to Mr. L. Robert, please? Oh, my name is uh, Robinson. I am an associate of Mr. Moliskis. I have an assignment from him for yourself. Uh, he suggests I come along and see you tomorrow. In the early afternoon? Uh, thank you. Boss. Harry, have a drink. Mary Lou gets out of the nick today. They arrested Teddy Alfield at two o'clock this morning. What for? Bit of thieving he did a year ago. Then they nicked Carter. Carter? Put him out of bed in the middle of the night, charged him with receiving stolen property. They traced it to a safe deposit box. Safe deposit? Hey, not the one I told him to put it in. Yes. And then they nicked Donovan, Palavicini, McTaggart and Jones. What, nicked them all? Yes. Last night? Yes, and they'd have got me too when I saw them coming and nicked out the back way. Well, what's going on? What the hell's going on? That's what I'd like to know. Sullivan. Well, Lesky, what is going on? How the hell do you think I know? Right, boys. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Thinking. We've been thinking too, Mo. Hey? No, no, you've got it all wrong. Maybe we've had it wrong for years, Mo. Doing what you told us. Till you were ready to shop us. Shop you, me? Oh, come on. Three of my boys went the night too, and four of his. And all of the charges stick, Mo. Some of them jobs are a year old, but they all stick. And every charge, the night after you spent the day with Mr. J.G. Reader. Reader? Yes, Reader. Who was here the night before? Who you spent the next day with at Wembley? Who you went home with afterwards? Hey, and then what happens? Reader, was that the bargain, Mo? That he'd get Mary Lou out of stir if you shopped our boys? Did you grass on Plessy too? Is that how Reader got him? Well, come on, Mo. We're waiting, Mo. I've been conned. Conned. Yeah? The devil. The old devil. Can't you see what he's been up to? No. But you tell me, Mo, because I'd like to know. Well, he tried to convict me, but he couldn't. So he's trying to put me out of business. <laughs> he's conned you, too. I've been conned by someone, Mo. That's exactly what he wants you to think. And that's what we do think. Don't we, boys? So what are you going to do about it? I'm meeting him again tonight. Surprise, surprise. It will be. For Rita. Yeah? Yeah. Stabbed in the back he'd been. The hospital says he'll live, but he'll never be the same again. 
I think we've seen the last of him. Who did it? He was stabbed with a Moroccan knife. We found it, and after an anonymous tip-off, we found the moor. Gentleman by the name of El Rabut. He's confessed, but he won't say why. Your signature, Sir Jason? Not now, reader. Uh, I beg your pardon, Sir Jason. I couldn't help overhearing part of your conversation. I think I can shed a little light on the matter. You? What do you know about it? Well, it so happens I did have an appointment with Mr. Moliski myself last night. I failed to keep it. Just as well for you, Mr. Reader. He had a loaded pistol in his pocket. Uh, you uh, say you had an appointment with him? For what purpose? You may have noticed in the papers recently, the Jason, something about the Moroccan emeralds being in London. Uh, you remember? Uh, yes, yes, I remember. Well, by the merest good chance, I happened to trace them to this Moorish gentleman, El Robert, who had brought them to London to sell them. I arranged an appointment with him earlier yesterday afternoon. El Robert, the, the fellow who stabbed Lisky. I'm afraid it does seem so, sir. Well, having traced him, I was naturally desirous to obtain the emeralds uh, so that you could hand them back to the Moroccan government. In order to allay El Robert's natural suspicion of me, I, I told him I'd come to purchase the emeralds as a representative of Mr. Mo Lisky. Reader, you bought them. What did you use for money? I'm afraid my procedure was a little irregular there, sir. I, I had no time to obtain the requisite permission. I'm afraid I uh, rather recklessly used the 50,000 pounds in notes that were forged by that ingenious gentleman, Bartholomew Xavier Plessy. Uh, somehow, El Robert learnt that he had been paid in forged currency and, thinking this was a rather unethical manoeuvre on the part of Mr Moliski, as whose representative I had posed, he decided to exact his own vengeance on that unfortunate gentleman. Uh, but reader, the, the, the police report states that uh, Liskey was stabbed at 10 o'clock last night. Uh, now, are you suggesting that this uh, Robert uh, went for an after-dinner stroll and happened, uh, just by mere chance, mind you, to bump into Liskey? I may have mentioned my appointment to him. I may have mentioned where it was. Yes, well, when I think of it, I... I believe I did, in order to lend conviction to my story, I told El Robert when and where I should be delivering the emeralds to Mr. Liskey. Mr. Liskey will be in hospital a very long time, I hear. Oh, pardon me. In my excitement, I almost forgot. The nine great emeralds of Suleim and the Magnificent. I trust, Sir Jason, you will bear in mind the insignificant part I paid in their recovery and weigh it against my lamentable failure in securing a conviction against Mr. Liskey. Thank you. Well, I'll be damned. What was the name of that snake, sir? Mamba, wasn't it? I must remember that. Ah. Yeah. 